What's up guys, Dopeziola here, and I just wanna say thank you so much. This is officially the 420th video, and it happens to be a story time, and it happens to be the last video of the year. 2023 has been awesome. 2024, we have a lot of plans, a lot of big stuff lined up. If you've been here for five minutes or five years, thank you for supporting my channel. We're on the way to two million. Thank you guys so much. This is the 420th episode, story time. Let's get started. So you can from Merced, California. You know him by the name. Dope as Yola, it's time for Story Time! Perfect. Hey, what's up YouTube? Dope as Yola here. Hope you're having a dope ass day. Welcome back to Story Time. Let's get straight into this. As you can see from the title, I'm pretty sure you're excited. I'm excited. I feel like I haven't talked about this in a long time. And honestly, I can't just make up stories. I have to kind of like live my life for other stories to come. So both of these stories are within the last year, all right? And actually one of them was five days ago. But if you want long form story times every Monday, go to the Dope As Usual podcast because it is essentially the longest story time every week. So here we go, guys. Let's get started into story time. This is Police Encounters. Let's light this chopper of a joint up. Let's get started. We are ready to go. Let's start the story time. Ooh. All right. Let's get into story one. Story number one takes place Los Angeles, California, this month, this year, last Friday. So here's a little backstory. I am extra cautious. I double check everything. I think every possibility through. Malcolm in the middle. I, I do this Jimmy Neutron thing. I'm like, uh, nah, nah, I might get shot over there. <laughs> or, you know, I might get robbed here. Actually, you know what? I'm good. I'm very cautious. I'm hyper cautious, but you know, I've made it this far. So the reason I'm saying that is when I go to airports, I know my name is already flagged. I've been smuggling weed through the airport since I was 14 years old before it was okay to bring weed on the plane. Now I can bring a couple zips, eight grams of hash on a plane in California leaving. It's just the law. One ounce, you can bring up to one ounce and eight grams of concentrates on your flight to LAX. It's just a law. San Francisco, Sacramento, you're fine. Don't take my word for it either. Just Google it. It doesn't mean, damn, Thomas got me arrested at the border of Canada. Like, bro, I didn't say international fly. I said, if you're going from California, don't just trust the dude on YouTube. Go Google it. If you're taking this as advice and not go to jail, Google your state first. So with that being said, I'm extra cautious, all right? When I take weed, even today, I hide it. I triple bag it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I used to put a note on my weed that says, get me off the plane. If you have to touch this, this is legal. I print out my ID, I print out my card, everything, tape my jars shut. So no TSA, we get little fingers in my jars. I think everything through. So when I say this, every time I go on the plane, I have to dump my backpack because I carry my backpack. It's my weed, my laptop, my stuff. It is full of shake. I am so cautious and I clean off my tray every time and I still have like a lawnmower bag when you're cleaning out all the gunk. That's what my bag looked like every single time. So when I'm going on a trip, I know I have to dump my backpack upside down, clean it out, every crevice, go through everything, make sure I don't have anything stupid in my backpack. Remember, I do that. Can't speak for everyone. So what happens, guys? Rosie and I are going to Las Vegas. This is last week. You know, two, three days just to go hang out by ourselves. Our anniversary passed. We were so busy. We didn't do anything. So like, you know what, Rosie? Just me and you. Usually we go places where we're with people. Just me and you. Let's go to Las Vegas. Everything's good. Woke up. Went to go look at a house to because I'm probably gonna move. Come right here to this room. Film a podcast with Marty. And in the show, I'm like, as soon as this is over, I'm gonna hop right on the Uber, go to the plane. And that's exactly what I did. Got on the Uber, went to the plane, going through everything. I'm like, all right, check. Weed's in there. I didn't bring my torch because they always take my torch out my bag. Always flag me for my torch and throw it away. I'm tired of losing blazer torches. So I just buy a little cheap torch wherever I go. I had my rig in a pelican case, all my hash in my bag. I had my dabber, my timer, everything in a pelican case walking through TSA. No one gave a shit. They're used to it. I saw two other pelican cases in line and I know they weren't guns by the look of the guy, what he was wearing and the stickers on it. Nobody puts a 710 sticker on a gun case. You know what I'm saying? That's a rig. I was like, I love California. I'm such a lucky person to live where I live. Other people 
people in like other states are going to jail for a joint. I'm here with a piece of glass art and hella hash going to Vegas. So I know how lucky I am. I get it. I understand. We're getting up to the line, give our stuff. Yeah, blah, blah, check in. I look at Rosie, I'm like, damn, we're going to Vegas. We'll be in Vegas in an hour. Let's go. We get up to TSA, backpack, shoes, wallet, anything metal, my phone. And I'm never taking my damn watch off through TSA. If you have a watch you like, do not take that shit off. You can let them scan you. I've heard too many stories about things getting snatched or lost. Like, I'm good. Get my stuff, put my shoes on. Rosie puts her shoes on. I'm like, where's your person bag? She's like, ooh, we got shifted to the back line. I go, what do you have in your bag? She goes, nothing. Maybe it's like some hash. Ah, no, who cares? So we're sitting there waiting. And then the TSA guy's like, is this your bag? Come over here. And they have to search it with you if it goes through as flagged. I'm standing there and I'm like, it can't be nothing crazy. And then he goes, ma'am, Rosie, this is your bag. This is your purse. You packed your purse. She's like, yeah. He goes, come to the side with me. We go walk to the side in front of everybody. Come to the side. He might as well just did it there. It's all see-through windows. Everybody could see everything. You've been to the airport. And he goes, can you explain this? Big ass flip knife. I'm like, Rosie. <sighs> It's okay. I was like, can you throw it away? He goes, not this. Rosie forgot her flashlight stun gun in her purse. A stun gun and a knife. A knife with a window breaker on it. Not, not a legal knife. I got this for Rosie in case she's by herself somewhere. And this is before we had our guns and shit. Peace of mind, like Rosie, if you feel weird, slack that knife out when you walk to your car if I'm not with you. Get that stun gun out and just zzz, zzz, as you're walking to your car. Because if I'm not with you and we're always together, it's just that one chance of like, if I'm not with you and something happens, I'm gonna lose my mind. So he looks at it and goes, so can you explain this? And I look at her. I'm super pissed in my head because I'm like, you know how flagged I am at the airport. You didn't check your fucking purse? Are you kidding me? But also, I'm at the TSA thing and I'm like trying to play it cool like it's no big deal so they get us the hell out of there. I just don't want to open my bags up. Really? <laughs> my suitcases over there? Like, I would rather you not go through those. And uh, it's definitely not the legal limit. So I look at him and go, dude, I gotta be honest. Can, can you just throw them away? I don't want it. It was an accident. I didn't mean to bring it. He goes, man, I, I have to call the cops. I go, what do you mean? He goes, this is a stun gun. It's not just a knife. I have to call the cops and report this. And I go, can you just throw it in the trash? I don't want it. It's not like I'm here to hijack. I just, just throw it away. He goes, let me stand over here. For 15 minutes, the guy brought up six managers. They're all just measuring the knife, taking pictures. Every eight people came up to take pictures and do stuff and measure. They have Rosie's ID. And then like four minutes later, two LAPD cops. Start walking through the building and I see him like, are you for real? And I heard one of the ladies brown uh, flannel and I'm like, is Rosie in trouble for real? The cops come, they stop, they see Rosie's shirt, go you? And I'm trying to like, I'm doing this one. I'm trying to make it look like I don't give a shit. Can we leave, bro? We're not terrorists. Can we just get out of here? You know what I mean? I'm trying to do the whole innocent like, <laughs> we almost done. This is not a big deal. Can you just throw it away? I'm trying to do that. I'm trying to like, eh, but nicely like, oh, how you doing? Flight to everybody. The cops come in, they start talking to those TSA people and they're looking over at us. The second the two cops were in the TSA booth, I forgot to say this, one cop stopped, put on gloves and asked us, can you come step over here with me? Like we were gonna shoot the place up. He sat us down. You ever been arrested before? Looking at Rosie. You ever been arrested? What's your criminal record? I'll be right back. Are you kidding me, dude? And I'm looking at Rosie, not saying a word. I'm just looking at her like, I'm just trying not to get mad. A stunt gun, Rosie. Could have just did this. Oh, yeah, I don't need that. So, uh, we're standing there for 15 minutes as the cop, what's your warehouse? What's the address? And I tell him, and he goes, oh yeah, there's a lot of bum fools out there. I go, I know, but she has a knife and a stun gun. We just came from the warehouse. You just throw it away. He goes, not up to me. I don't know if they're gonna prosecute you. I don't know if they're gonna find you. I don't know if you have to leave. I don't know if you're gonna be on no fly list. I don't know. He said all the worst things back to back with white gloves on, just staring at us. Like we were gonna run. We're in an airport. You have my shit. 20 minutes goes by, dude. Every TSA person just coming by, taking a picture of the night. Anyway, they're measuring it. They're still doing their thing. Then the other cop comes out with the cop that's standing in front of us and goes, is this, this is the thing? You're gonna get a citation? You may not. Just give me the paper. You're just like, hey man, you might live. Or die. Like, dude, what are you saying this like this for? It's like he loved it. And he was young as hell. Too. I don't know. I don't know. He just, he was nice. I could just tell, like, no, oh, you like being a cop. Huh? You really like being a cop. The other cop was like a 25 year old black chick. And you could tell she's like, my partner's a square. I'm not arresting you. But he was over there with gloves standing in front of us, like, like he had just busted drug dealers, dude. Anyway, they come up to us and say, hey, we're not gonna make you miss your flight. I'm like, it's not even that big of a deal. So we're just everybody staring at us with the cops surrounding us, wondering what we did. Tight. 
So uh, they leave, the cops walk away. The big giant TSA agent, like, I gotta call the cops, man. He really loves being a TSA agent. Like, I don't know, the whole story of this is like, oh, you guys love this power you have, huh? I'm like, dude, we're just going on a flight, you just throw it away, he goes, you tried to smuggle in a knife and stun gun into a federal building. And I go, no, 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 we didn't try. It was just in her bag. And I'm sitting here going, don't be a little asshole, Thomas. Don't say nothing stupid. I'm like, no, I totally get it, man. I totally get why you have to have the co call the cops for this. Just trying to be polite. That can be misconstrued as me being passive aggressive. Or I can be like, sir, I'm sorry. I, I just, I was agreeing with you. I couldn't just sit there and go, yeah, you gotta call the cops, Mark. Okay, got you. Ruin my fucking day. Anyway, he's writing a citation. I don't know what the wording is for people of authority. He goes, hey, here you go. You're gonna get a citation with a fine. Or, or, or you won't. <laughs> And he gave her, I just looked at it. She gave Rosie a citation with her name. It's like, so you're gonna be on a no pre-check list. You cannot do this with us anymore. And one other thing. Like, all right, bro, we just picked United because JetBlue was sold out. I won't be seeing you again. And that was it. We, we left, went to our flight, and that was it, guys. I really thought Rosie was gonna get in trouble. I was thinking, what's the nearest jail here to the LAX? Like, I'm gonna have to go get Rosie right now. I'm not letting her stay in there. This sucks. Can we still get a car and drive to Vegas? I know it's super, super dumb and it's super annoying, but if Rosie gets arrested, I'm gonna go bail her out in two seconds and I hop right in the car. We're gonna pretend it never happened, go on our trip. She was so upset and embarrassed. I was trying to not like, it's okay. If you go to jail, I'll get you right now. No big deal. Like in my head, I'm like, bro, come on. We do shit. You gotta be more careful than that. That's all I was thinking, like, come on, man. But it is what it is. Uh, double check your bags because stuff like that can happen. And as we're walking away, could have get arrested. Make sure you double check your bags. And that's the only thing he said. And I was like, yup, yeah, Rosie. <laughs> like, I didn't say it in front of him, but I was like, in my head, just, ah, I wanna yell so bad. And that was story number one from five days ago. <laughs> All right, guys. On to story number two. <laughs> story number two takes place probably like a year ago, but the backstory takes place from a lifetime of bad decisions. If you ever watch a podcast and I go, I've done it twice now in the, in the life of the show in three years ago, you know, I'm already like, <coughs> He's going to jail again tomorrow. My homie keeps getting in trouble and going back to almost prison and then not, and then getting a long eight term prison sentence. And then they're like, well, it's not a violent. You're not an offender. It was minor. It was for marijuana trafficking. No, blah, blah, blah. And mm, a year. Twice my friend has got over nearly a decade sentence chopped down to less than a year. Two different times. And I know a lot of you are like, he's snitching. There's no one to snitch on. <laughs> he's a grower. <laughs> like, you know, like, this is a grower. So if you heard me on the podcast, go, oh, I think season one, I went, oh, no. So and so just went to jail. I forgot to, you know what I mean? Like, no, that was today. But it, it's so common with my friend. Like, when are you going to be out? It became a joke. Like, oh, you're going back? You going back home? All right, for sure. Let me know when you come back out here. <laughs> like, dude, stop getting in trouble. It's an ongoing joke with every one of my homies. And all of us know our friend and our friend just, he's just like one of those experiments where people grab a hot, a hot ass pan and go, ah, ah, and then just keep doing it over and over and over and over. He won't stop. So anyway, my friend's on felony probation, not allowed to have firearms, not allowed to have a scale. You know what's crazy? Felony probation is officer, Pro officer said, I don't care about the weed. He had three, four packs in his room. He goes, I don't, I don't, not here for that. Once again, shout out to living in California where being on felony probation and your pro officer says, I don't care if you smoke, work at a dispensary. My homie worked at a, sp a spot. <laughs> like, all of these things because California's like, you're not on meth, you're not gangbanging. Stop wasting my time. Here we go. My homie is on felony probation. We're hanging out, doing our life stuff. He's almost off probation. He's being dumb. He's still carrying a gun. I'm like, bro, please stop. Just, just fight fools. And you don't do anything. You stay at home, asshole. Why do you carry? Anyway, we're getting into this. It's a long story. I'm not getting into everybody's business like that, but I'm telling you our relationship. Our relationship is makes me going, hey, remember you made that stupid decision? Stop, stop, please. I'm just doing my regular life stuff. My little cousin Jojo says, hey, I'm gonna go to the weekend concert with my homies and my girlfriend. Let me know if you have time to hang out because they're gonna do it here at the forum, I think. Something, they're gonna do the concert here in LA and I don't really chill with my cousin Jojo that much because he lives in Merced and he's way younger than me, but I still down to hang out with him, he's cool. So when he comes, I'm like, yeah, hey, come through. So he comes over, we're at, you know, we're doing stuff, we're hanging out at my house, we're smoking. He doesn't smoke, but we're smoking, we're hanging out at the warehouse. He's just like never seen the podcast. He's never seen like the studio and stuff. So, you know, I'm just showing 
them around. I think we go get food. We go get food, my homie that I'm talking about, let's call him Jailbird. My homie's name is Jailbird. So Jailbird's like, yo man, what's up, what are you doing? I'm like, nothing with my cousin, blah, 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 blah. And he goes, trying to smoke? I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm down. 10 minutes later, I'm almost in my warehouse. He goes, bro, how far are you? He's like, I have to pee so bad. I, I don't wanna just pull over, I got some packs on me. Can you just hurry up? I'm like, I guess. <laughs> I'm not gonna get there magically faster because you had to take a piss. Anyway, I'm just giving you that backstory because now you're imagining him probably speeding. Ah, you know, when you got a piss, he's probably like, Cutting corners. That's what I'm imagining, my friend. If you gotta piss that bad, you got packs and work on you, and you gotta get to somewhere, you're probably gonna go a little faster, even though that's more dangerous to get pulled over. So I pull up to my warehouse, unlock the chain, the gate, come in. My cousin, all his homies are in the car, in his car next to me. About to walk in, I open my door, I turn around, and I hear whoop. I'm like, oh, someone got lit up. That's, oh, it's Jailbird. Damn it. My homie pulling into my driveway of my warehouse got pulled over because he ran a stop sign a block away. Why? Probably because he had to piss. <laughs> he just went for it. Not the case. I will get into that later. Not the case. So here's what happens. He pulls up, parks right behind my car, and I can see him moving around. I'm like, stop moving around. It's not often that you can see 20 feet away your friend pulling up to you while getting pulled over. So the lights are behind him. The lights are going through his back window. He's like lit up because I'm looking at my homie with lights behind his window. So I'm like, you're boxing it? I can see the smoke, man. That's what I'm saying. Like the, with the light behind, I'm like, it's boxed in there. Uh, oh, man. I hope this guy's cool. I hope this cop don't give me a shit. I'm like, I can see the smoke through the backlighting. Shit. And I see him moving around. I'm like, stop moving around, fool. It's like a dream when you're watching some a situation, like in a movie, except it's real. And I'm just sitting here like, the cop has no idea he knows me. He just pulled someone over that got pulled into a driveway. And people are just standing there going, what the hell? The cop has no idea I know him. So we're just standing there and I'm looking at him, and then that's when the cop, you, know, you guys know each other? They go, yeah, he was just coming to take a piss. We're just coming to hang out at my warehouse. He goes, I'll get you out of here right now. I was like, I'm sorry, man. I talked to you real quick. Go take a piss. I gotta do the traffic stop. And my homie Jailbird's like, ah, I gotta piss. He's just trying to play it to the cop. Like, I'm innocent, man. I just gotta pee. It's my friends. Look at all my friends right here. You know, we're trying to play. I'm like, oh, officer, sorry. I was like, we own this building. We're just hanging out. It's my warehouse. And my friend said he had to pee really bad. And that's it. The cop looking at us like, oh, these guys are cool. He's like, don't worry about it, man. Don't worry about it. You can see your ID? Run it. You ran a stop sign, man. I, I gotta, I gotta do it. And Jailbird, I can see it on his face. I'm like, why you look so stressed? What do you have on you? I can see it on his face. I know my homie very well. I can see it on his face. I'm looking at him like, you look embarrassed? That means you know you're going to jail. What do you have on you? I'm looking at him and he's looking at me through the windshield. I'm, I'm 10 feet away, right? Because I walked up closer. He goes, can you just take a step back? I'm like, oh, sorry, this is my friend. That's how I stepped up a little closer. So I'm standing back still and I'm looking at him and we're just like ESP talking to each other telepathically. And I'm like, I'm gonna fight you. I'm gonna fight you if you have something in your car. I'm gonna hit you. Like, I, I'm gonna hit you so hard. We've been trying to do so much to make this fool's life better and start some stuff and get some business going. And I'm like, bro, but stop getting in trouble. Please, I'll pay for everything. So I'm looking at him like, no, please tell me you don't have what I think you have. And the cop runs his name and he comes back. He goes, hey man, I gotta, get, I gotta take you out of the car. You already know the routine. I didn't know you were on felony probation. Can you step out? He's like, officer, do we really gotta do this, man? I, I gotta piss. He goes, I swear to God, dude, I'm gonna just look in your car and I'm not gonna even go crazy. I just, I have to do it. My cam's on, that cam's on. I can't not. And I look at the officer, I'm like, he's gonna piss his pants. I'm just trying to do the whole thing at the airport. I'm trying to play off, it's no big deal to get the officer like, oh, these fools, yeah, he don't care at all. <laughs> all right, get out of here, man. I'm trying to put it, instill it into the officer some way that it's nothing but nice ass cars outside. So he's like, these young ass full, all these nice ass, they don't give all right, hurry up, man. Let me just look through your stuff and I'll get out of here. That's exactly what happened. He's looking through the bag. My homie's on the back seat of the car. By this time, another cop has pulled up. This Mexican cop, the one that got pulled my jailbird homie over, very cool. Looked like our age, looked chill. He even says like, bro, I, I gotta, I have to. My cam's on, let me just do it real quick. He was doing it like he was inconveniencing us. Like, oh my bad, man. Can I just do it real quick? Can I just search you, man? Like, that's how he was talking. Captain America got out of the car. Blonde woman and then Captain America, Boy Scout, coming on the scene with his hand on his gun. Looking at me, can you step back, sir? The Mexican cop told Captain America, hey, chill. I was like, hey, my property, I'll stand right here. I'm not doing anything. So like, stay right there. Don't interfere with our investigation. Go, I'm not, man. I'm just standing here, dude. And I looked at my cousin and all his friends looking at me like, really? Bobby's like, all these nice ass cars. Get back. Oh my God. Rosie standing next to me where all this 
<laughs> smiling. You can smell the weed. I have boxed my car on the way there. Like they knew. I'm standing there, no keys in my ignition, so you can't tell me I drove here. Shut up. I don't care. And I'm standing like, don't worry, man. I'll stay on my property. And they're going through the car. Cop car's right behind Jailbird's car. I'm over here looking at him. They sit Jailbird on the front hood, like leaned against the front hood of the cop car, while Mexican officer is going searching his car. Eight seconds in, Mexican cop gets up like that. Like, Starts walking to Jailbird and goes, turn around, man. And I'm like, whoa. You can hear me go, oh. I was like, no, man, we're gonna hang out right now. I was trying to like, for real, man? I was like, officer, for real? And he goes, you know the routine, dude, turn around. Jailbird looks at me like, yo, call my mom. I'm like, what, why, what? And he's looking at me like, I can see it on his face. I'm like, tell me you don't got a scale and a gun in that bag. You got pounds. That scale can't even weigh pounds. Why are you riding around with it? Forgot to say this. Mexican cop was damn near about to stop surging. He was just doing Doing this when the other cop pulled up step back forgot to say it put on gloves started searching the car again as it was done damn near done forgot to say that so he's searching the car then he has, puts air on the back and the mexican guy's like oh. searches again and then he goes through aaron's backpack and that's when he goes all right man turn around captain america decided to go hard glove up and deep Scrooge McDuck dive into Jailbird's car. And he was looking for something. Back to my homie, call my mom. As he's getting cuffed, I'm like, bro, what? So I was like, officer, what, what? And he just does this. Holds it up, puts it on the, on the top of the car. Pistol, puts it on the car, starts getting clipped. I'm like, that's it, you're done. You're on felony probation. They told you your 12 year sentence starts if you ever get in trouble again. I'm like sad, cause I'm like, fool, you're gonna miss my wedding? I hate you so much. Not like I actually hate him, I just, I hate that you're a good person and you keep doing this. You haven't been in a fight in 10 years. Why are you still carrying this? It pissed me off so bad that I didn't know what to do. So I'm looking at him and he's getting put in the car and I'm just looking at him and he's looking at me, he goes, like, I know. I'm looking like, bro, are you kidding me? And this is where the story gets really good. <laughs> Mexican cop is talking to Jailbird through the window like, I'm sorry, man, I have to bring you in. You know what you have. I can't overlook this. It's loaded. What do you want me to do? And I can hear him talking like, come on, officer. I was like, bro, what do you think? He's just gonna say, oh, okay, get up. Blonde girl and Captain America are there to make sure that Jailbird is a prosecuted. Like the flat top on this man and the way he came out and looked at me, he was a little bit younger than me too. I was like, bro, you can chill out. Oh, man, it's not that big of a deal. As you can see me going, <laughs> come on. Like, come on, dude, my threat. Chill out, fool. He was buff as hell, too. So anyway, he's still searching Jailbird's car. I'm like, bro, you already found it. That's what he didn't want you to find. And the whole time I found out later, he was doing all that movement to hide a joint. The car was boxed with a gun and packs in the car. The joint is what you're worried about. It's stupid. He probably would just let you go if you didn't see him moving. Anyway, fast forward two minutes later, all I hear is Captain America. Ooh, got it. He's going through Jailbird's trunk. Pulls out like four or five peas and stuff. And he's looking at it and Mexican cop goes, you can tell he's like, why are you still searching the car? Turns back to Jailbird talking to him. And Jailbird's like, yo officer, can, can, can my friend hang on to all my stuff? Like before you impound the car? And Captain America's like, no, he can't take your stuff. And the Mexican cop obviously has seniority over him and goes, yeah, he can have all of his stuff, just not the gun. He can take everything else. Everything else not illegal. And Captain America goes, I'm not giving this to him. And Mexican cop goes, put everything in that bag and go hand it to his friend. And I'm like, oh my God. God, this is the best day of my life. I didn't know what was really in there. I, just, I saw a big ass bag, a black trash bag in his trunk. I'm like, so there's peas? <laughs> what else is in there? Tuffle, backpack, black bag. Come on, Jailbird, what are you doing? I bet you no one was even buying those packs that night. He just had them on him, just in case. Like, it pissed me off. Anyway, Captain America starts walking toward me. Remember, my cousins and every one of our fr of their friends, like three friends and his girlfriend, are standing right outside their car. We were all getting out of the car to walk in. So we all just went, Whoop! And now we're in the situation of watching our friend. And I'm like, Jojo, that's my homie. And he goes, oh, wait, that is your homie. Yeah, it's the guy we're waiting on. It's the guy I always told you. Oh, my friend's about to be, boop. Anyway, Captain America's putting stuff in a backpack. He walks over to me. He's like, here. I go, what is this? He goes, it's weed. And I look in, I see packs, half peas, some QPs, bagged up eighths, uh, eighth and mylars, trapped out, no scale in there. He looks at me and I go, California, right? Isn't that awesome? And I turned around and he looks so fucking bad. He looked at me, he's like, it's weed. And I went, California, right? Awesome. And I turned around and walked in and I swung the warehouse door open. Yeah, look at our warehouse, fool, jerk ass, jerk. Walked in, put it down, left the door open, like, yeah, stare at it. It's our building, you dick. 
dickhead. Cause he thought, I don't know what he thought, but I was like, you know what? I'm gonna pull that shit on you. It's my spot. You're on my property. Like, you know what I mean? I was like, shut up, give me the weed. I didn't say that to him. Oh, thanks, California. I love saying that, California, right? <laughs> I was high as shit. Obviously my car smelled. We all smelled like weed and here's this cop going, I made a bust. I have to give him all the weed. No, I'm not doing it. Oh shit, you just yelled at me, okay. The way he was putting the stuff in the bag, I'm like this boy is so mad. Gives me the bag, I put it away, come back out. Jailbird's like, can you take the car and just leave it here? <laughs> And that's when Captain America goes, nope, impounding it. And then the Mexican cop was like, I got to impound it, man. Mexican cop drives Jailbird off. I look at him as he drives by me, I'm like that. Just so disappointed. Like, bro, we're supposed to start this company. We we're searching for spots. What are you doing? Come on, bro. Blonde cop and Captain America sat in my driveway park for 40 minutes because they could. And then the car got towed. I was waiting for the call for him to call me from jail. And if you watch my Snapchat or Twitter, this is the same night where I'm like, hey, man, it's two in the morning eating Taco Bell, waiting outside the jail. <laughs> That was this night that I'm talking about. I'm sure a lot of you remember that video. I just thought it was funny. I'm like, I was just supposed to hang out. It's 10 o'clock and now I'm up at three in the morning bailing your stupid ass out. Tight. And they wouldn't let us inside the jail because we weren't authorized. So we had to stand outside for an hour. Bill Bond's like, we can't just sit right there on the bench. The cop goes, nah, and closes the door on us. Empty lobby, everything. I don't know what it is about Burbank cops, but they're dickheads. Or you know what? Maybe I just got a couple dickheads. Continue. We're at the Bail Bonds place. We're going through all this stuff. My homie's calling me and I'm like, why do you sound so worried? I'll bail you out. It turns out he had another charge that Fool ever told me about that he got recently and it was stacking and stacking. And this was the final straw. So I'm there for three and a half hours with the Bail Bonds people. Very cool couple. Super cool. We're we talking about business plans. 40 minutes in, he's like, so if I did this, I'm like, because I have this company. They're cool as hell. His wife's way younger, but the, the man's older. They're super cool. We're talking about business plans for two hours. We're talking about stuff. And I was like, hey, I'm going to talk. Well, you guys want anything? Blah, blah, blah. I come back, we're getting food, we're eating. And like, hey, you guys want to eat in our break room? Like, we're chilling at this point. They start asking us what we do because we have to write down because we're bailing them out. I have to write down. And we're just talking. And they're like, whoa, nice car. I'm like, where'd you get this car? And I'm like, oh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Because I had the C63. The guy's like, the blue, it's so nice. We hit it off. Like, we're just homies now. And they're like, I hope your friend gets out. I was like, damn. You guys deal with this all the time. You just people's fate. You have no idea that you're talking to someone's family member in 10 minutes they could be crying because their homie's never getting out. Boom. 410, I think. Walks out the door. And I look at him. I was like, you know I should hit you, right? You know I should punch you. And he goes, bro. I'm sorry. I'm like, dude, what's gonna happen? You might go to prison for nearly a decade. And we always wrote down, he's gonna beat this case. It's gonna happen. I wrote it down, I put it in my Pokemon ball that I did for the picture with the Pokemon weed coming out. And I kept it in myself. So every day he was in jail, I'm like, yo, the note's in there, he's getting out. And that's nonviolent offender thing. And they're like, time served. And they did time served for the previous thing. I was told, like, we're gonna start a juice company, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that. Judge is gonna be like, dance fool's taking care of this, taking care of that. His parents are sick, he takes care of all his family. On the day he was doing, like, this guy's making juice for his sick parents and providing for him. Nonviolent, get him out of my jail. They cut my homie's sentence from eight years to two. Time served, good time. My homie's already home. <laughs> I picked his ass up a week and a half ago. He's already home. You're starting a company, you're an entrepreneur, you're taking care of your parents, you're trying to be straight and narrow. You used to be a felon, you've been to prison. The judge is gonna look at this and like be like, this is the guy I meet on the street providing for people. And that's exactly what happened. He goes, this is the, and he had the bottle with his brain. He goes, he makes juice. The weed guy is making juice for his sick parents. Get him out. Literally what happened word for word. My homie told me this. He was like, my, my lawyer just started telling me what the judge said. He was like, I did did not know that that was gonna happen. I thought you were gonna go to jail. And he did go to jail, but not had to go to federal prison like he was supposed to. The things that come out of just be, try to be a little positive, try to like sit up straight and be nice. And it worked amazing. So the moral of that story is I love California so much. Weed is like water. And the look on that Captain America's face when he had to give me that bag of packs was priceless. Never anywhere else in the world can that happen. So basically when he handed to me, I was like, thank Thanks for this great story, dickhead. <laughs> 
So, the moral of story number one, what did we learn? Check your bags. If you're walking to a federal building, make sure you know what you have on you. Always think, remember, DMVs, airports, and I think a couple other random places we walk into all the time are federal buildings. Be cautious, be careful, remember what you have on you. Even a national park is federal, so you can't even bring weed to Yosemite. So be very cautious, remember where you're at. If you're traveling another state, look up the laws. Make sure when you land, you're not getting arrested. What's the moral story number two? Living in California has its perks. Yeah, we got a lot of homeless and robberies and it's a Grand Theft Auto lobby out here. I understand. For everyone just minding their own business, going to work, smoking weed, this is the spot for me. I watched my uncle get pulled over with 10 pounds and not even go to jail. I watched my friend go to jail and they gave me his weed because they didn't want to confiscate it. No, moral of this story, keep your head on your shoulders, don't do stupid stuff, be safe, don't be a criminal. Don't carry a gun unless you need it. And if you have a gun, make sure it's registered to you and then you're gonna be okay. That's pretty much the moral of the story is don't be a criminal. Stop breaking the law, asshole! <laughs> Thank you guys so much for being here. I appreciate it. This has been Police Encounters, Storytime, Season 5. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for supporting the channel. Drop the like, do all the YouTube stuff. We appreciate it. As always, guys, until next time, I'm Dope Azola. Have a dope-ass day. Perfect timing.